Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV for you, still out of our COVID-19 home studios. And with me here is today James Wellstead from Sibanye Stillwater. You remember the fantastic uh, company, which is the, yeah, the world leader in platinum palladium production and also the uh, third largest gold producer in the world. James, good morning and welcome. How are you? Morning, Jochen. Yes, very good. Thank you. Uh, still in lockdown, but uh, we're getting, getting through it. Super, fantastic, great. Um, yeah, we want to talk about your yeah record outstanding Q1 numbers. Of course, you just published yesterday, and I think it's important uh, for our viewers to get an update on that from you, and also maybe some explanations. How did you come on that? Uh, first of all, I want to talk um, about your yeah record quarterly adjusted EBITDA. On the one hand, seven over seven hundred twenty-four million dollars, and how have you achieved that? despite all the lockdowns and all the production cuts you had? Yeah, so first of all, uh, the first quarter was prior to, um, or, or just ahead of the, the lockdowns, the COVID-19 lockdowns taking place. We did lose more than a week of production at the end of March. So these results could have been better than what you, you see. Um, but they are, as you say, very, very good results. Record EBITDA and significant improvements year on year in production. Remember last year in uh, the beginning of 2019, we were experiencing a, a, gold, a strike at our gold operations in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And it was before we had acquired Marikana to conclude our South African PGM strategy. Now, Marikana uh, accounts for about 41% of our production uh, in South Africa at the moment. Um, and obviously, that integration has gone very smoothly. Uh, we're starting to realize synergies. Previously, we had identified about 730 million of annual synergies to come out of Marikana, and we're expecting over 1.2 billion by the end of this year. And that, so is, very, that is South African rent, right? That's in rent, sorry, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just under 100 million of, of, of EBITDA in dollar, or of uh, cost savings in dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so, Marikana has been an extremely good acquisition, and obviously, with the uh, PGM basket prices, that we saw in the first quarter uh, is generating very, very solid cash flow for the business. So our um, uh, EBITDA, as you said, adjusted EBITDA in RAND terms, 11 billion RAND. In dollar terms, $723 billion is a record um, performance. Um, and, uh, you know, it's actually more than the, the entire group EBITDA that we produced in 2008. So it gives you an idea of how much in one quarter, we produce more than a full year of EBITDA. And it just shows how uh, the evolution of and growth of this group um, and, and the, the gearing to these precious metals prices that Estonians come through. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, that's really great. And also what I see here in your numbers, if we take, for example, the PGM operations in South Africa, in the first quarter last year, you produced like 263,500 ounces. And this quarter now it's 418,000 ounces. But still, if mm -hmm. we compare it to last quarter, you are down, let's say, approximately 10, 12% in the production. But if I look at the basket price, the basket price is up 35%. So yeah. It, it offset it completely, right? That's right. So normally December, uh, third quarter and fourth quarter uh, are the best production quarters. Um, our first quarter of the year is always affected by people returning to work from December holidays. So we, we normally build up to up production through January and into February. So the, it is always lower in terms of production uh, than, than the December quarter. But you're right. I mean, the, the, the prices have been extremely high. And quite interestingly, even with the pullback in PGM prices with the global lockdown due to COVID, um, what we've seen in South Africa is a weakening of the currency. So the average ran to the dollar last quarter was 15.38. We're now sitting at about 18.50. Mm -hmm. So that depreciation has offset uh, the weakness in the dollar prices. So we actually are still realizing, even at, at current um, point, uh, realizing basket prices of over 30,000 rand a kilogram, which means that our operations at normal production would be having 50% adjusted EBITDA margins or higher at these kind of levels. 
Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Also, what I really like to read is that your leverage was reduced by 40% to the net debt to adjusted EBITDA, uh, which is now reduced to 0.75. And I can remember, I think you have been like at 2.5, one and a half, two years ago, right? Yeah, that's right. So I think end of 2018, we were sitting at about 2.5. And that was when we were in the middle of the, the strike at our gold operations. Um, but over the course of the year, uh, especially as we integrated Marikana and the operation started to normalize, our leverage went down to 1.25 at the end of December 2019. Mm -hmm. And we're currently sitting at 0.75. A lot of that has been obviously with the EBITDA expansion that we've seen and, and spoken about. But we also have reduced our dollar debt by about 300 million. Oh, wow. So we, we were targeting one times net debt to EBITDA um, and dollar debts of around a around billion dollars. Um, and we we well below that at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you want to reduce your let's say dollar debt further down? Let's let's assume. Um, I think the second quarter still uh, was uh, under heavy conditions with COVID nineteen lockdown. But let's assume Q three and even Q four goes quite well. Uh, would you say that you might reduce further down? That's definitely the intention. I mean, I think we're aware that we're in cyclical industry, and obviously the the outlook is still uncertain. Uh, due to COVID in terms of global demand for, for the metals, et cetera. So it's prudent for us, I think, to reduce our debt further. I think we're in a good position anyway, uh, but we certainly will focus on reducing our, our gross debt further. And then uh, also, obviously, uh, you know, that'll put us in a stronger position going forward, whether we resume dividends or whether we look for further growth in future. That's what I wanted to hear, resume dividends. I like that. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, another uh, big part of your business is the recycling of catalysts. And I think a lot of people really did not realize maybe that you are one of the, I would call it, world leaders in those markets. So on the one hand, you are producing the metals for the catalysts. And on the other hand, you are recycling them. So I think uh, this looks to me like the perfect uh, value chain. Yeah, and, and it's something we're very proud of. Our U.S. operations are, are some of the lowest emission processing, smelting and refining businesses in the world. Um, you know, their sulfur emissions and, and other emissions are multiples lower uh, than allowable emissions in the U.S. Um, and we're very proud of that. And then also, obviously, with having extra capacity there, uh, we've developed a substantial recycling business. Uh, one of the largest in the world, as you said, the largest in, in North America. Um, and uh, yeah, we're very proud of the fact that we are actually able to clean up the environment as well as producing metals that are crucial to um, extracting noxious gases from, from automobile engines, etc. So I think in both ways, we, we try to benefit uh, the environment uh, through our actions. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I like that. And uh, you also do not see, uh, let's say, any short term uh, disruptions in the business, despite that, uh, Yeah, let's say Tesla is selling more e-cars and uh, many more e-cars, uh, but also hybrids are coming onto the roads, but the hybrid still has a catalyst in it. Um, mm -hmm. So do you see any, let's say, five year effect or do you think, uh, well, there's still so many cars out there, there's enough business for us? Listen, COVID's had an impact. I mean, as you know, um, uh, automakers have shut down their production lines. Uh, demand is likely to be soft for a while. Uh, we factored in a lot of those numbers, you know, assuming a 20% reduction in, in demand for our PGMs. But at the same time, uh, there's been a significant supply shock and supply disruption due to COVID. Uh, South Africa, basically, PGM mines have been closed through April, and we're now only building up to 50% uh, of normal production levels uh, through March, through May, uh, and we, we haven't yet been told when we can increase our production further. So really, that's uh, South Africa produces over 70% of global PGMs, mm -hmm. and by, by um, closing all of those mines, uh, that's had a huge impact on potential supply for this year, and the future supply for the rest of the year is also a little bit uncertain because we don't know at what rate we'll be able to resume production. So from the numbers we've looked at, despite the demand shock and, and the impact of, of COVID, uh, it's quite balanced by the supply uh, shock on, and closures in South Africa. And on the whole, we're looking at uh, slight deficits in rhodium and, and palladium still, uh, probably platinum still in surplus, 
but on the whole, uh, you know, fairly balanced market. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, also, I think you have substantially improved your safety on the mines, right? Despite, I, I read through the uh, press release, despite you had, of course, some death cases, which, of course, you have 90,000 people employed and uh, your mines are really big and uh, they are, really, yeah, let's say also long in production, but you maintain them extremely well. But uh, as we know, in mining, it could happen through a gravity event, through whatever. So what, 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 what have you exactly done to improve the safety still? So uh, in two years ago, in, in the first half of 2018, we had a series of, you know, really unexpected incidents uh, where we had multiple fatalities mm -hmm. at our gold operation. So 24 um, employees um, uh, were killed that year uh, at our mm -hmm. operations. Uh, we, we intensified our safety efforts. I mean, we've got very safe mines generally, um, and we observe very stringent safety protocols and procedures. But we did intensify the effort. We've begun to roll out um, a behavioral change program in order to make people more aware of the risks of the operating environment and, and making the right decisions. And mm -hmm. that's uh, working out quite well. I mean, we haven't had, as you said, um, a fatality at our gold operation since August in 2018. So just after those two events, um, we've gone for more than 620 days without any fatalities. And over 11 million, uh, 11 and a half million shifts without any fatalities, which is by far a record performance globally for mm -hmm. deep level mining. Uh, it's never been achieved before. So we're very proud of that. Um, we, we did have some fatalities at our PGM operations, but we are focusing on trying to get that to zero as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, but it's always good to take care about uh, the people and you're doing the right stuff. Definitely. Last question. Um, the Anglo Platinum Force Majeure. Can you maybe explain that a little bit more? What was the impact or how you are impacted from that? Yeah, I mean, it was announced on, I think, the 10th of, um, of, of March uh, that they had a converter failure at one of the at their plant. Uh, the backup converter also had some problems. So they had to declare force majeure. They expected about an uh, 80-day period to, to, um, uh, uh, to, to fix uh, the converter. Um, in that time, we negotiated that we would be able to take our metal that they processed for us across to our Americana operations mm -hmm. and use excess capacity there to process the metal. Uh, unfortunately, just after we'd reached that agreement, um, the, the, government, the South African government announced the lockdown. Uh, and as a result, we haven't operated through through April. Um, and a week ago, Anglo Platinum announced that they have repaired their converter and will be resuming uh, normalized production, lifting the force majeure sometime this week. So really, things will go back to to what we ex uh, had before, where they will continue to process our metal. Mm -hmm, super. Can you maybe give us um, a little bit of an yeah, outlook is maybe said too much, but uh, some some thoughts on Q2, especially with the lockdown in South Africa. When do you think you can go back to normal? Um, what are the production rates now so far? What's what's going on and what can we expect maybe for the quarter? So the quarter was significantly disrupted. Uh, April, there was very little production that mm -hmm. took place across the industry. Um, towards the end of April, uh, the government did relax some of the restrictions and allow us to build up to 50% um, of capacity, uh, really 50% of employees at the workforce, so that we could test our uh, COVID-19 protocols, uh, social distancing, etc. That's been quite successful. We haven't had any um, cases of COVID at our operations, despite thousands of people uh, returning to work. Um, so the expectation is that there will be further relaxation um, of the restrictions and we'll be able to build up, you know, initially maybe 70, 80 percent and then to full production if possible um, over the course of the next few months. Um, but, you know, this quarter will be impacted, but we do think that should the prices stay at the current levels. Uh, remember, gold is, is very high. It's over a million rand per kilogram in South Africa, which is 25 percent higher than it was Uh, even last quarter. So at these kind of prices, if we can get our production up to 70, 80% plus of normal um, uh, levels, uh, we will be generating very good cash flows again. 
Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Super. James, thank you very much. It was a fantastic update. Uh, all the best to you. And let's hope that uh, that COVID stuff uh, really diminishes uh, sooner than later and uh, that you guys can go back to normal. And honestly, I look forward to my dividend because I'm a shareholder. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank, thank you, Jochen. And uh, please be safe and uh, all your viewers, everybody be safe out there. Thank you. Thank you. Also to you, good health and uh, stay healthy. That's important. Kind regards to the team and all the best for you. Thank you very much, James. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was James Wellstead from Sibanya Stillwater discussing Q1 2020. And uh, you heard it that uh, despite lower production was well offset by lower rent and also higher metal prices. And uh, of course, uh, the second quarter will be still still impacted from the shutdown and lockdown uh, in in uh, South Africa. But uh, it looks to me like that the company is uh, going uh, fantastically through that period. Also, they have repaid over 300 million US dollars from their debt and the leverage is now down to 0.75 and this is a fantastic number because it's always good to get rid of some debt and even in uh, special times it's even more important uh, because it gives you a lot more flexibility so Sibani Stillwater is full on track they are doing extremely well and what I like is they produce the metal for the catalysts but they also recycle it so that is also a substantial environmental contribution here from the company and at the lowest emissions possible that's also really important so Thanks a lot for watching us. All the best to you. Stay healthy and uh, safe. And uh, thanks and bye-bye from Switzerland. James, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.